makers of Chase and Sanborn coffee, the blend that's friendship in a cup. Present the Chase and Sanborn Hour. And your host, Don Amici. <laughs> This is Don Amici back home again, stumping on the old stamping grounds and issuing a hearty invitation to all of you to join another Chase and Sanborn hour. Hail, hail, Amici's here. <laughs> Thanks for the musical greeting, Charlie, and you're right. I'm here, and the gang's all here. Dorothy L'Amour, Donald Dixon, Robert Arm Brewster, and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, and, of course, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. And all of us are united in the hope that you get as much pleasure out of Chase and Sanborn coffee as we do in our weekly visits with you. <laughs> Mr. Amici, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Swell. Oh, well, thank you, Charlie. Yeah, you look so wonderful, and you look so nice. Well, really, I... Yes, I oh, j- you're so handsome. Oh, oh yeah. I get it, and it's so near Christmas. Mm. Yeah. Why, Mr. Nietzsche, you're so skinnical, uh, skinnical. <laughs> and so right. Yeah, I had a hunch I was. But really, Mr. Nietzsche, it's nice to see you back again, all Christmas aside. Well, really, Charlie, it's swell to be back, all McCarthy aside. Grand also to have the opportunity to be the official greeter of our very special guest this evening, Geraldine Fitzgerald and bombastic Billy Gilbert. And for the true expression of the reunion spirit that we all feel tonight, I make way for Donald Dixon as he sings Vincent Newman's jubilant composition, The One Girl. When the troopers ride away along a train sunny side of day begins to pale, then we like to sprawl about a pile of glow, then my dreams are all about a girl I know, laughing eyes, golden hair, tender arms, white and fair, lips that I press to my own. When will I be riding home across the plain? When will I be riding home to her again? The one girl that I love, the one girl that loves me Wait until my truth comes over the trail The one girl that I love, the one girl that loves me That's the prize I pray for That's what I go home to stay for when I say goodbye, love, the fair smile that I see Cheers me on when I go out to the pie, boys And my heart is my voice And my feel as strong and feel as long As the one girl that I love loves me When I say goodbye, love, their smiles that I see Cheers me on when I go out to the fight, boys And my heart is my voice I feel as strong and feel as strong as the one girl that I love One hundred and sixty-four years is a long time, but not long enough to dull the beauty of a poem written by Walter Lander in the year 1775 and brought to the attention of an appreciative 20th century world by contemporary composer Frank Bridge. Donald Dixon sings, Oh, That It Were So. Sometimes comes into my head That we may dream May dream when we are dead But I am far from sure we do
Charlie, my boy, you've been a pretty active citizen while I've been away, haven't you? Yes, sir, you betcha, Mr. Image. Yeah, I hear you started a colossal Christmas shopping service. Oh, yes, yes, I did. Glad you mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, could I interest you? No, in you this, can't. Uh, ah, yes. All right, all right. Brush me off. Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> After all, I've already made $2.60 profit. Oh, you did? Oh, yes, indeed. You betcha. Wonderful. Yes, and then I bought Bergen's present, and I've still got $2.30 left. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, uh, uh, what, what did you buy, Edgar, for Christmas, Johnny? Uh, what have I... Uh, are we alone? I am. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good. <laughs> then I'll tell you. I, I bought him a pair of silver-mounted military sponges. <laughs> You mean military brushes? Not for Bergen, no. Oh. I was thinking of getting him a three-piece set, you know, with a chamois buffer, too. <laughs> to put a shine on. <laughs> I hear they're wearing domes dull this year. <laughs> Johnny, I think you ought to be very considerate of Edgar. After all, he was quite a sick man. Yeah, oh, well, he's all right now. <laughs> Although he's, uh, he's just a little test in the topper on the one subject, see? Yeah, what's that? Well, he's got some fantastical idea about what he ought to get Dottie Lamour for Christmas, see? Well, uh, what does he want to get her? Yeah, uh, well, I'd really, I don't, I hate to mention it. What's all right? Come on, what, what is it? Promise you won't say I, Charlie, I give you my word. I swear, I'm, don't I it. swear. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, he wants a, a, a team of mules. Can you imagine that? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what's the joke, fellas? Oh, hello, Ed. Uh, uh, we were just discussing a psychopathic case. We both know. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Small work, Don. Small work, yeah. Well, let me in on it. You are, Bergen. No, <laughs> Say, what are you talking about? Well, Edgar, I'll tell you. We were talking about what you wanted to get Dottie for Christmas. Oh, don't mention it. Oh, yes, you mean you mean the pair of mules. There he goes, see? See? Oh, yes, Charlie. Did you get them? The the mules? Yes. Well, I, uh, tell you what I did, I tell you what I did. I made a down payment, Alan, see? Yes. Hoping you might change your mind. Well, I won't change my mind. I want Dorothy to have them. Oh, Mr. Bergen, show me one instance where she could use them. Just one. Well, they're very handy. They are? Yes. Mules? Of course they are. <laughs> Why, they're practically indispensable. Yeah, uh, sure. For example, uh, let's say it's late at night. Yes. Maybe Dorothy's reading in bed. Uh-huh. And she decides that she wants a sandwich. Yes. So... A sandwich. Yes, a sandwich, yes. So <laughs> she runs down to the kitchen. Uh-huh. And, well, that's where the mules come in. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, you mean a mule sandwich? No, no. <laughs> Don't you understand, Charlie? Uh, she uses the mules in going from the bedroom to the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> She goes by mule. She goes by mule, yes. Down the stairs and all? Oh, yes, of course. But first she'd have to go outside to get the mule. No, no, no. No, she would keep them upstairs. Upstairs? Yes, of course. Oh, in the guest room, I suppose. Yes, yes, she could. Tied to the post? Yes, yes. No, under the bed. Under the bed? <laughs> no, Bergen. This is awful, Bergen. What's the matter, John? Oh, it isn't nice to see you this way. <laughs> Only a few weeks ago, you were all right. Oh, Charlie, now, what is all this? You understand, don't you, that, that when I say mules... Yes? I don't mean mules. <laughs> don't say any more. Just rest. Yeah. <laughs> You're tired. No, no. Now, wait a minute, Charlie. Mules is just another name for bedroom slippers. Mules is just a... Oh, God. Why, Charlie, you... <laughs> you didn't think that I meant... Oh, well, did you... Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> I knew you were kidding. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, if I didn't, may Mortimer Snurd come back and haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is that noise? Hey... Hey, hey, Edgar, Edgar. Look, look what's coming in the door. Well, as I live and breathe, if it isn't Mortimer Snurd on his Christmas tree. Uh, oh, hello, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hello, Dixon. Run, do not walk to your nearest exit. All right, all right. All right, all right. Well, Mortimer, you back in Hollywood. Help me, help me, help me. Oh, so this is Mortimer Snurd. Yeah. Boy, this is really a surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Imagine finding me here. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mortimer. I'm Don Amici. Well, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to meet you. I'll meet you. 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 Uh, meet you. Uh, sorry, I met you. I'll meet you. <laughs> Well, just call me Don. I know how it is. I sometimes have trouble remembering names also. Yep, I'm ignorant too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all glad to see you, Mortimer, but what brought you out here to the West Coast? Well, I, I heard you was ailing with a misery. Oh, I see. Yep. Well, it's nice of you to be concerned about me, but uh, did you read about my illness in the Snurdville Gazette? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, heard it on the radio. Oh, yes, it's on the radio. <laughs> well, you listen to our show, do you? Yep, yep, sure do. Always listen to it around uh, milking time. <laughs> <laughs> so you milk the cows and listen to our show at the same time. Yep, yep. <laughs> I have more fun laughing. <laughs> Gosh whiz, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, do you like uh, Bob Armbruster's music, too? Uh, sure do. Yep, yep. Nice. Yeah. Yep, he plays a nice uh, milking tempo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, how did you get out here? Uh, did Grandpa Snurd give you the bus fare? Nope. I, uh, you know that scooter you gave me for Christmas? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> well, that's how. Now, uh, that scooter. Yep. Do you mean to say you came all the way from Snurdville? Yep. On one of those scooters? Yep. Well, wasn't it a bit tiresome? <laughs> no. Not after I found out there was an engine under the seat. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did you find that out? Coming through Pasadena. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come out here on that scooter? Well, I did just what you said on the crate. On the crate? Yep. What did I say on the crate? Uh, return in five days. Oh, I see. <laughs> here I am. Well, uh, do you like the scooter, Mortimer? Yep, it's pretty. It's got nice shiny handlebars. <laughs> Riggy diggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like those handlebars? Yep, they look like silver. Mm hmm. But the man told me they was made of, uh, uh made of, uh, hmm. A uh, chrome num 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 They made of what? A uh, chromium yum 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 yum. They made of chromium. Yeah, that's what they're made of. Yes. Yeah. Now what are they? Uh, they're rusty. I'm gonna paint them red. All right. <laughs> What do you think of our rural friend from Snurdville? Mortimer, oh, I think he's swelled that. He's so down to earth. Well, I'm afraid Charlie doesn't share my enthusiasm. No, I'm afraid he doesn't. But somehow I feel that my sweetie pie Charlie will still be able to take care of himself. Yeah, I think you're right, Daddy. But things will be a little tougher with you around to heckle him. Well, are you suggesting that I go away again? I should say not. We've missed you, Don. Really, Daddy? Yes, it's, uh... Well, there's something so vivid about you. Why, Dottie. <laughs> Something so colorful. Why, Miss Lamour. <laughs> yes, sir. Vivid and colorful. Those are the words. For me? No, for your ties. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we missed them, Don. My ties, huh? Look here, young lady. I uh, am red, blue, gray, that's green. That's enough of this. Your song, Miss Lamour. Well, Don, I, uh... It's Mr. Amici to you. Oh. My ties. Miss Dorothy Lamour of the cinema, and formerly a friend of mine, sings Day In and Day Out. <laughs> Day in, day out, the same old food follows me about, the same old pounding in my heart whenever I think of you, and darling I think of you, day in and 
comes one of the chief pleasures of being back on the job. It's ushering in the best news of the day. You'll be glad to know that people have been mighty quick to tell us how much they like dated drip grind coffee. All over the country, they try it once and come back time after time asking for more of the same. Yes, sir, Chase and Sam and dated coffee in the new drip grind is the biggest winner in years. From coast to coast, our roasting ovens are right up on their toes, trying to keep at least one jump ahead of this new demand. So no matter where you live, you get this delicious blend freshly roasted. You see, each district has its own fresh food rapid delivery system to rush fresh coffee to your grocer every few days. And he never takes more than he can sell right off either. And every silver package is dated, so you can be sure your coffee is right at the peak of its fine flavor. And remember, we don't leave Chase and Sam dated coffee in your grocer's store over 10 days. That's the same system we use on the regular grind for percolated coffee. In fact, the new drip grind is made from the same rich coffees, so it's no wonder people love it. There's a cash saving in it, too. It's always freshly roasted, so there's no need for fancy high-priced containers. The silver package costs a whole lot less, and we pass the difference on to you. So for the holidays, when you're getting your groceries, call that to mind and ask for Chase and Sandman dated coffee in the new drip grind. Welcome and talented addition to the Hollywood scene and the American screen. And the most charming addition to our own troopers tonight is our lovely guest, Geraldine Fitzgerald. Miss Fitzgerald's ability has made her one of the most brilliant lights on the movie marquees. 
as earned by her splendid performances in Wuthering Heights and Dark Victory. Geraldine Fitzgerald's newest chance to shine will be found in Warner Brothers' forthcoming picture, A Child is Born. She appears for us tonight in an original play written by Cyril Kramer, entitled Family Album. Miss Geraldine Fitzgerald. scene opens in the living room of the Thompson residence. It is a quiet, rainy Sunday afternoon. A young girl and a boy are seated on the divan looking through an old family photograph album. <laughs> <laughs> this is taken about 1895, huh? Did you ever see anything so funny in all your life? Just look at those old pictures. <laughs> They're better than a comic strip. Hey, look, look. Look at that one there, will you? Looks like the front of a fur shop. <laughs> but many a soiled vest beats under those bushy brown beards. <laughs> the one in the middle is my Uncle Abner. He ran away from home, home when he was 15 to be a circus clown. I don't know why I had to run away from home. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, who's, who's that guy there? My grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes, when he was young. After all, even grandfathers were young once. That's hard to believe. Who's, uh, who's the little lady opposite him? Grandmother. When she was young? Yes. Boy, that's some couple. This picture was taken before they were married. <laughs> they look like a couple of tin-type passport photos. Well, what do you expect? It was taken in 1899, <laughs> while they were at a church picnic. Oh, 40 years ago. No, that was just 40 years ago. So, will you get a load of that haircut and that celluloid collar? Well, look at her. Did you ever see so much hair in all your life? And that bustle. She does have a sort of a sweet expression, though. Yeah, sweet and simple. They were supposed to have been awfully in love. Oh, that's a laugh. Why will you look at them? About as much expression in life as a couple of stuffed mackerels. What, what did they know about romance in those days? I bet they didn't even know the word. Why, of course not. I don't suppose they even had a chance to propose to her. Everything was probably uh, negotiated by the families. Do you really think so? Absolutely. How do they make love to each other? Sitting around all evening looking at stereoptic and slides in the parlor while the old folks looked down from the sitting room, making sure he go home by 9 o'clock. I feel sorry for them. Yes, yeah, so do I. No moonlight rides in the car with the top down. No movies to go to and hold hands in the dark. No goodnight kisses. It must have been awful to be in love in those days. Them? In love? Why, they didn't know what it meant, the poor sap. <laughs> <laughs> Picnics are such fun, aren't they, Philip? Great fun. Kathleen. Yes, Philip? Kathleen, could, uh, could I talk to you for a few minutes alone? Alone? Uh, yes. But we can't leave the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, we can. They'll, they'll never miss us. Miss Wellington would. She has the sharpest eyes of any chaperone in the world. And she takes a census of her brood every 20 minutes. Well, we'll, we'll be back before 20 minutes. She'll never know we're gone. No, I couldn't. Please, there's... There's something I, I want to tell you. Can't you tell me here? Oh, no. Not, not in front of all these people. This is something important. Important? Yes. W won't you come, Kathleen? There's a quiet spot near the stream. Uh, you know, where the, where the big sycamore hangs, hangs over into the water. Oh, Philip, we shouldn't. But I've got to talk to you. All right. But only for a few minutes. Only for a few minutes. Here. Here, take my hand. Oh, Philip, be careful. It's slippery. Look out, look out for that mud. I can't get across. I'll carry you. Oh, no, Philip. Put me down. You'll fall. No, 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 no. Not a chance. If someone should see us. Oh, they won't. They won't. There. There. How's that? Delivered safe and sound. Well? But what? Hadn't you better put me down? Well, across, you know. Oh. Oh, sure. Sure. Here, here's the old sycamore. Every time I come here, I expect to find it tumbled into the water. Oh, it's good for another hundred years. You know, I'll bet that's a wise old tree. Let's sit under it where it's cool. Oh, here, uh, wait, wait a minute. You'd better sit on my coat. The ground might be damp. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a lovely day, hasn't it? Yes, it has. In all the years we've had our church picnics here, it's never rained. That's quite a record. It's unbelievable. 
Oh, it's nice here by the stream, so quiet and peaceful. When I was very, very young, I used to come to the old sycamore <laughs> and read poetry. You like a poem yourself, Kathleen? Beautiful, delicate, fragile. Philip. You're lovely. You shouldn't talk like that. I'm only telling the truth. Kathleen, your hands are so little and, and soft, adorable. Oh, Philip. Philip, there was something you wanted to tell me. Well, it, it's rather difficult to say. Difficult? Kathleen, you, you'll, you'll try to understand. Yes, Philip. Well, Kathleen, I'm, I'm going away. Going away? Over oh, for a visit. No, I'm going away for good. I don't understand. You said you'd try. But why are you leaving? Aren't you happy here? No, not very. Haven't the people been friendly and helpful? Oh, I couldn't ask for better friends or, or finer people. And why are you going away? Kathleen, I've, I've got to leave. For two years, I've been practicing law here in Clinton, barely eking out an existence, living from hand to mouth. There, there's no future here for me. I, I can't do the things I want. I, I can't have the things I want. But you can't expect to accomplish everything in a day, Philip. No, but, but the days become weeks and months and years, and, and I only get deeper into the rut. Kathleen, there are things I've got to do while I'm young. Ah, oh, but you are so young, Philip. It might take a while, but you've no right to be impatient. It's no use, Kathleen. I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time. You have? Yes, I, I've got it all planned. I thought I'd go to one of the largest cities. Chicago, maybe. A young lawyer would have a future there. A chance to make money. And is money so important to you? It is right now. Then, then maybe you're right, Philip. Maybe you should go to Chicago. Perhaps, perhaps there is no future for you in, in Clinton. You want me to go? Yes. Yes, if you think that's best. Oh, I think you do want me to go. I didn't mean... And it. after I'm gone, maybe maybe that'll give you a chance to marry Herbert Matthews. Maybe it will. Sure, I see it all now. That's what you want. To get me out of the way, isn't it? Yes, of course. His father's the richest man in town. You'd be a fine lady if you marry him. With a carriage and horses and, and a big house on the hill. Yes. You're glad of this opportunity to get rid of me. Yes, I am. He doesn't have to work or struggle or, or count the pennies. Everything comes easy to him. That's what you like. Yes, yes, you... yes. <laughs> oh, Kathleen. Yes. <laughs> Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen, my darling, <laughs> what have I been saying? Oh, Please Philip. forgive me. Let me dry those tears. Thank you. I'm all right now. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Kathleen, for what I said. And I'm sorry for what I said. Calling when we only have these last few precious minutes left. Our last chance to say goodbye. When, when are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. So soon. I close my office, taking down my shingle. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Oh, Kathleen. If I could only take you with me. If I only had something to offer you. Take me with you, Philip. What? Take me with you. You mean... You, you mean... You'd marry me? Yes. Yes, I'd marry you. Oh, but, but, Kathleen, you, you don't know what you're saying. I do, I do. My darling, do you think I could lose you now? But, but it's impossible. No, it isn't. I, I, I haven't a job. I, I haven't a penny to my I name. I don't care. I love you. And, uh, and your, your father would, would never let you it's marry me. It's only you and I and our happiness. He'd, he'd never forgive you, Kathleen. I don't care. I don't care whether he'd forgive me or not. I don't care what any of them would think. But, Kathleen, you, you don't know what it is to be penniless and, and friendless in a big city. We can't ever be friendless, we two. And, and it'll, it'll be a long, desperate struggle before I, before I get I started again. I won't mind. I won't mind, Philip. But I, our love couldn't last that way. You'd grow to hate me. Hate you, Philip. Because we were working together, fighting to make something wonderful out of our lives. Oh, darling, you don't know what you're saying. You won't be sorry? Never. Oh, my darling. Will you marry me tonight, Kathleen? Yes, this very night. We, we won't have much time to get ready. I'll, I'll make an excuse to leave the picnic now. A headache. Oh, well, Wellington will never believe you. She's got to believe me. I'll offer to drive you home. After some persuasion, I'll accept. You'll have to change in a hurry. I won't lose a minute. Luckily, there'll be no one at home before seven. I'll be in front of the house with the carriage. I'll be ready. Oh, Philip, let's hurry. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, darling. What is it? 
I want to kiss you. May I, Kathleen? Yes, Philip. Kathleen, you know I'll be good to you. I'll make you happy. I know you will, darling. No matter what happens, no matter what the future has in store for us, know this, my darling. I'll never stop loving you. And I'll always love you, Philip. <laughs> no, no, honey, those old fogies never knew what love meant, the poor saps. Poor grandmother, what she must have missed. <laughs> yeah, poor grandfather. Guess never had a chance to realize what real love was. No, huh? I'm certainly glad we didn't live in that time. Yeah, me too. Look, honey, put away the album, will you? If I take time, I'll tell you how pretty you are. Nice of you to notice. Yes, sir, you'd be all right. If you know it didn't turn up like that. Thanks. You're kind of nice yourself. Happy? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking of Grandma. Oh, oh, forget Grandma. We wasted enough time already. This is Don Amici and the Chase and Sanborn Hour continues. At this time of the year when the bite of winter is in the air and Christmas is just around the pine tree, spring seems like a distant memory. But Pietro Cimara caught the inspiring promise of the season's thrilling beauty in his composition, Song of Spring, Canto de Primavera. Oh,
old familiar sight and a mighty welcome one of these parts used to be that of Billy Gilbert, peering out from behind his wondrous Gilbertian mustache. But those days are gone forever. Billy has decided to come out of hiding, and his mustache is just a thing of ticklish memory, which naturally leaves us all a little shaken, but nonetheless pleased to welcome breezy Billy Gilbert. Billy, how is everything? And how is it with you, Mr. Amici? I certainly think you're looking peachy. Boy, your eyes is bright and snappy. Do you think maybe you got a fever, old chubby? <laughs> but Billy, that, uh, that's poetry. Of course. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns. Don't it? Yeah, well, so they say, uh, but Billy, uh, this isn't spring anymore. I know that, but I'm still a young man. <laughs> and fancy. Oh, <laughs> you're just saying that to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy, pull it or not, it's uh, good to see you so happy. Sure. I'm happy like the bee that bumbles, because I don't got no more trumbles. <laughs> isn't that tender? <laughs> Now, that's rare. Too, too rare. Look, uh, Billy, do you uh, break into this sort of thing often? Sure. <laughs> Why do you think I got long hair like a bohem... Like a bohem... Uh, like a bohem... Like a bohunk. I mean, like a Brahma. Like, what, I got long hair like a poet. <laughs> Just a creature of songs and sonnets, huh? That's right. <laughs> Sonnet sides up. <laughs> like this. The north wind is calling, the snow is falling, and falling and falling and falling and falling and falling and look, falling. Uh, look, Billy, I, and I falling. hate to interrupt. Then why do you do it? Uh, and falling and falling and falling. Looks like a long, hard winter. And falling and falling. Billy, and please, will you? Can I help it if we got a blizzard, a blizzard, a lizard? I mean, a bus, a bus. <laughs> Can I help it if it's falling and falling and falling? I want to hear more of your poetry, Billy. Aha, you see, you can't get enough of it. It gets into your blood, doesn't it? Yes, and into my hair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. For that, I give you my most beautiful, my most delicious, my biggest masterpiece. Well, let's have it. Well, I haven't written it yet. <laughs> but, oh, is it beautiful? All about a star. Oh, a star, huh? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star, maybe? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's how it starts. Uh, uh, how I wonder what you are? Oh, it's coming to me. <laughs> up above the world so high. Yes, up above the world so high. Boy, am I getting it. <laughs> like a diamond in the sky. That's got it. Marvelous. <laughs> oh, Mr. Amici, that's the best poem I ever wrote. That's the... Yeah, yeah, Billy. You know, I don't see how you do it. Of course not. You got to be born with it. It comes easy when, you, when you're a genius. Say, I can rhyme anything. Sometimes I wonder how I do it. Sometimes I wonder why. <laughs> because they're so beautiful. Like this. Asparagus is good, I guess, for little hers and hymns. But as for me, it's hamburgers and good old Boston Bims. And good old Boston witches? You know, uh, good old Boston Bims. You know, Boston Bob Bims. You know, string Bims. I'm a Bims. Oh, everybody knows who is Bims. Billy, look, can't you say beans? And spoil a beautiful poem? Uh, <laughs> don't be ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Cut it out. Consider it cut. All right, then. I'll tell you more poetry. She's beautiful. Listen. Hooray for the birds, hooray for the bees. But not for the golden rod, because it makes me... <laughs> 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 Then doesn't 
rhyme. <laughs> it does. If you use your imagination, you don't got any. <laughs> well, I still don't think it rhymes. Oh, so, it's so silly. I can rhyme anything. Oh, well, now, look, Billy. There are some words that have no rhymes at all. Please, Mr. Amici, don't tell me my business. If you're a poet, you make rhymes. That's oblivious. Yeah. All right, then rhyme this, then. There was an old lady with hair of silver. Oh, you want me to rhyme with silver? That's it. Oh, that's easy. Makes me sick and tired of the kind of people I got. Well, can you do it? Of course I can do it. There was an old lady with hair of silver who had... Say, wouldn't it be nice if her hair was gold? No, it wouldn't. Uh, oh, well, it was just an idea. Let's see. There was an old lady with hair of silver who had this... She could... There was... She had on her hat... She... <laughs> say, how about dyeing her hair red? No, Billy, no. Well, why not? Because I don't want her to dye her hair red. Oh, you don't want her to. A fine thing. Poor old lady wants to dye her hair. What's the matter? Can she have a little fun? Christmas is coming. The holidays is making fun for everybody else. And there's that poor little old lady sitting home all by herself. And the tears are streaming down her little cheeks just because you won't let her die on her. How could you done it? How could a monster be so cruel? Oh, no, Billy, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. A fine time to be sorry. Yeah. You, you, you ruined the poor old lady's holidays, and you're sorry. <laughs> All right, you brute. Just for that, I won't do it. And you can't make me do it. Yeah, but Billy... No, look, no, 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 no. You don't win me back with your pretty words. Get down on your knees and beg and still I wouldn't do it. You won't do what? I won't rhyme silver and nobody can make me. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Amici. Thank you, Billy Gilbert. <laughs> The world is presently singing the song hits from the new Rogers and Hart show, Too Many Girls, which can hardly come under the heading of news, for the world has been singing Rogers and Hart melodies since it's had time to sing. As for myself, I like to go back to one of their former hits, the Connecticut Yankee. Old tunes of theirs and old favorites of mine. My heart stood still and thou swell. Bring in the old, Robert. <laughs> I took one look at you, that's all I meant to do, and then my heart stood still. My feet could step and walk, my lips could move and talk, and yet my heart stood still. Oh, not a single word was spoken I could tell you knew That unfelt clasp of hands told me so well you knew I never lived at all Until the thrill of that moment when my heart stood still Thou with me, thou sweet, thou grand, would kiss me pretty, would hold my hand, both thy eyes are cute to what they do to me. Hear me, holler, I choose a sweet lollipop loon to keep me. I feel so rich in a heart for two, two rooms and kitchen, I'm sure would do. Give me just the plot of not a lot of land, and thou swell, thou witty, thou grand. I feel 
so rich in a hug for two. Two rooms and kitchen, I'm sure, would do. Give me just a plot of, not a lot of land. And thou swell, thou witty, thou grand. It's in the book, that same old book, that you can't get too much of a good thing. And to show you how many people believe that's true, here is the latest news. The news keeps pouring in from every side that people like Chase and Sandlin dated drip grind coffee so much, they just can't get enough of it. They buy it once, learn how good it is, and then, from then on, boy, nothing else will do. They just have to have more of the same. Because the new drip grind is dated coffee, and that means freshly roasted. Coffee at its best just brimming over with fine, rich flavor. And to make sure you get coffee like that, no matter where you live, we've put up roasting plants all over the country. Your grocer gets his coffee every few days, fresh from the roasting oven. So when you buy dated drip grind, you get the delicious Chase and Sandman blend pop full of richness and freshness. You see, each locality has its own rapid fresh food delivery system. And the same fast service that's used to hustle out the regular grind dated coffee now handles the drip grind too. And just enough is left of each to last till the next delivery. The date is on every silver package, so you're sure of freshness and full flavor. You don't get a guarantee like that from any other coffee sold on a nationwide scale. And remember, no dated coffee remains in your grocer's store more than 10 days. Dating saves you money, too, because dated drip grind moves too fast to need high-priced containers. We use the silver package instead and give you the savings. So, for fresher, richer coffee, at a saving, get Chase and Sandman dated drip grind the next time you buy coffee. Say, uh, that's quite an outfit you got on there, Charlie. Hey, you like it? Yeah, I sure do. What's the occasion? Well, this is, this is the costume I wear in my new picture, Charlie McCarthy Detective, see? This is my Sherlock Holmes hat. It's my two-way hat, see? Two-way? Yeah. I don't know whether I'm coming or going in it. Huh? <laughs> I'm working on a case right now. Yeah, I noticed you're looking at her. Uh, <laughs> I'll bring her in, Inspector, so you can give her the third degree. Oh, uh, Geraldine. Yes, Tom? I want you to meet the man who is known around these parts for his wit, uh-huh. his talent, right. and his cleverness. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm referring, of course, to... Of course, of course. Edgar Bergen. That was... <laughs> this is a great pleasure, Mr. Bergen. Oh, thank you, thank you. Of course, I don't have to tell you I've heard a lot about you. Well, after all, his name is bound to get around, being so closely associated with me. <laughs> and um, who, who are you, little boy? Well, I... <laughs> little boy. <laughs> I'm Charlie McCarthy, that's who I am. Oh, you're Charlie McCarthy. Yeah. Well, that must make you very happy. Yeah, well, sure. Sh- <laughs> Why don't you know who Charlie McCarthy is? Oh, you'll pardon me for being uninformed, but just who is Charlie McCarthy? He is... Miss Fitzgerald. <laughs> don't you ever, don't you ever hear a clever fellow talking with Edgar Bergen? Oh, yes. I, I think the world of Don Amici. Well, yes. I have never seen anybody miss a point like she does. <laughs> I'm Charlie McCarthy, see. Well, don't you worry. When you grow up, you may be famous, too. Yes. <laughs> Miss Fitzgerald, you are now looking upon McCarthy, presently starring in his latest cinema epic, Charlie McCarthy Detective, see? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Yeah. I didn't know. No. So you've just finished your picture. I'm uh, sure it's a masterpiece. You can say that again. Everybody's talking about it around our house. <laughs> well, <laughs> who's in the picture? Well, I'm in it. Yes, I know, but who else? Well, who else? Uh, well, there's, uh, there's, uh, hmm. oh, there must be others in it. <laughs> Let me see. Well, I'm in the picture. And then there's, uh, oh, there's, there's Constance Moore and there's Robert Cummings and, uh, and me and Edgar Kennedy and, uh, 
And I mean it. Or did I tell you that? <laughs> yes, you said that several times. Oh, yes. Well, I'm in it several times. <laughs> you seem to forget, Charlie, that I'm in that picture, too. Oh, yes, yes, you in it. Of course, of course, Burgess. Yes, of course. Of course you were. What's that, were? Uh, oh, Oh, you haven't seen it since they cut out the dull spots, huh? <laughs> the dull spots? Yes. What do you mean? Oh, didn't Mr. Tuttle, the director, tell you? Tell me what? Well, I'm trying to be tactful. Can't you guess? Guess what? Well, I was talking to one of the film colors the other day, see? Yes. And he told me they like to work on your scenes in the picture. Well, I can understand that. <laughs> Uh, they get more pay. Oh, well, why is that? Well, after they get through cutting out your bad acting, there's so much film on the floor, it's a fire hazard. Oh, I... <laughs> that burns him up, see, Geraldine. Charlie, I don't believe a word you say about Mr. Bergen's acting. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he makes a very convincing hero. Thank you. But I'm really not a hero in this picture, although I do have some serious scenes. There's one in uh, which I'm supposed to be very sad. And you sure are, too. <laughs> what is about, well, you see, um, I had to accuse a man of murder, uh, which is a pretty serious thing, and it called for good dramatic acting. And it's still calling. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of joking about it, young man, you'd better uh, do a lot better for yourself, I think, if you take your film work seriously. Yes. Now, when I have a scene to do, I work very hard to make it good. Yes, I know. But you see, I have talent. All right, all right. Now, Charlie, stop teasing Mr. Bergen. I'd rather you tell me the story of the picture. Well, it's this way, Jerry. Miss Fitzgerald. Okay. <laughs> Miss Fitz. No nicknames, please. All right. Huh? Can't see anything, Ross. <laughs> well, anyway, in the picture, a guy is murdered, see, and I'm working on the case. Oh, that's exciting. Go on. Yes. So, in looking for clues, I run across a strand of hair, which, of course, eliminates Bergen. <laughs> <laughs> A deduction, Charlie. Uh, deduce, you say, yeah. Oh, I love Mr. Phillips. Will there be a big premiere of the picture, Edgar? No, but the first showing uh, will be uh, by invitation only, you see. Yes, we're only inviting the 400. And already, nearly 2,000 have refused. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's a great picture. <laughs> I must go and see it. It is good, isn't it, Edgar? Well, really, Geraldine, I, uh, I seldom recommend that anyone should go to see me in my own picture. And this is no exception. <laughs> All right. Charlie. I'm Charlie McCarthy, detective. The best in the world is the truth. You definitely must have heard of me. They call me the slap happy sloop. He don't be burden. They call me the slap happy sloop. Sweet. And simple and pure is a child's plea to heaven. And lovely is the music Beatrice Fenner has written. Dedicated to that peaceful time at eventide. When children pray, Donald Dixon sings it. Children pray for lovely things for lovely grow to be. How beauty grows more beautiful to see. When children pray for Tenderness alike becomes more deep. New forces turn and awaken from the sleep. When children pray, all growing things rejoice, and life's eternal hymn grows more profound. The love of all mankind so closely bound. When children pray, the voices of all living things are hushed. The wind is all humility. 
she draws near, and the God within his hand and God two subjects on which poets like to dwell. One of them's friendship and the other's farewell. Though no poet, I do know how to say farewell. And as for friendship, well, in this hour, we certainly get plenty of opportunity to make friends. Friends with each other, with you, and with Chase and Sanborn Coffee. Yes, people all over are finding out that there's real warmth and friendship in Chase and Sanborn Coffee. Friendship in a cup. Try it to see. We'll all be back next week. Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Dorothy Lamour, Donald Dixon, and Robert Arm Brewster in the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra. Our special guests will be Gloria Jean and Vera Vey. Until then, this is yours sincerely, Don Amici, saying au revoir. <laughs> the National Broadcasting Company. You're so skinical, uh, skinical. <laughs> and so right. Yeah, I had a hunch I was. But really, Mr. Nietzsche, it's nice to see you back again, all Christmas aside. Well, really, Charlie, it's swell to be back, all McCarthy aside. Grand also to have the opportunity to be the official greeter of our very special guest this evening, Geraldine Fitzgerald and bombastic Billy Gilbert. And for the true expression of the reunion spirit that we all feel tonight, I make way for Donald Dixon as he sings Vincent Newman's jubilant composition, The One Girl. When the troopers ride away along a trail When the sunny side of day begins to pale Then we like to sprawl about a pile of glow Then my dreams are all about a girl I know Laughing eyes, golden hair, tender arms, white and fair, lips that I press to my own. When will I be riding home across the plain? Say goodbye, love, their smiles that I see. Tears me on when I go out to the fight, boys. And my heart, my voice, I feel as strong as feel as strong as the one girl that I love.
164 years is a long time, but not long enough to dull the beauty of a poem written by Walter Lander in the year 1775 and brought to the attention of an appreciative 20th century world by contemporary composer Frank Bridge. Donald Dixon sings, Oh, That It Were So. It sometimes comes into my head That we may When will I be riding home for her again? The one girl that I love, the one girl that loves me Wait until my truth comes over the trail What I go home to stay for When I say goodbye, love The fair smile that I see Cheers me on When I go out to the pipe Boys And my heart is light, boys And I feel as strong as steel As long as the one girl That I love, loves me The makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee, the blend that's friendship in a cup, present the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and your host, Don Amici. This is Don Amici back home again, stumping on the old stamping grounds and issuing a hearty invitation to all of you to join another Chase and Sanborn hour. Hey, hey, Amici's here. <laughs> Thanks for the musical greeting, Charlie, and you're right. I'm here and the gang's all here. Dorothy L'Amour, Donald Dixon, Robert Arm Brewster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, and of course, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. And all of us are united in the hope that you get as much pleasure out of Chase and Sanborn Coffee as we do in our weekly visits with you. Gee, Mr. Meach, it's good to see you again. Gee, swell. Oh, well, thank you, Charlie. Yeah, you look so wonderful, and you look so nice. Well, really, I... Yes, I oh, I, you're so handsome. Oh, oh yeah. I get it, and it's so near Christmas.